Water is flowing in a 5 centimeter diameter pipe at a velocity of 5 meters per second. If the pipe expands to a 10 centimeter diameter, the flow rate in liters per minute is most close to what? Now the top of, of the continuity equation can be referenced under the subject of fluid mechanics that's on page 104 specifically of the NCES reference handbook. And more precisely, we're taking a little snippet out of this reference handbook. It falls under principles of one-dimensional fluid flow. Now in reality, fluid flow is not one-dimensional, it's three-dimensional. But in the cases of the FE exam and in general analysis of fluid flow, we break it down into one-dimensional fluid flow, as you will see starting tonight and working through some of these sections in hydrodynamics. So the continuity equation, as it reads in the NCES reference handbook, states, so long as the flow Q is continuous, the continuity equation as applied to one-dimensional flows states that the flow passing through two points, one and two, in a stream is equal at each point. So the flow is continuous. Q1 is equal to Q2, or otherwise A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2. As you see, Q is equal to AV. Now we'll be explaining and expanding on all these uh, general, uh, general explanations as we move through our problems. So let's go ahead and pull that general equation back over to our problem statement. We got A1, which is the area at point one. We got V1, which is the velocity at point one. We have A2, which is the area at point two. And then we have V2, which is the velocity at point two. So let's see what we are actually given in this problem statement. First, we know that at point one, or state one, or whatever you would like to call it, section A, section one, we have a diameter of the pipe as five centimeters. And of course, we want that to be meters, so we convert that to 0 0.05 meters. We also know at this point that the velocity is five meters per second. And we know that the pipe expands to a 10 centimeter diameter. So diameter at point two is 10 centimeters or 0.1 meters. So if we look back over to our general formula, we're looking for areas and we don't have the area at point one, we don't have the area at point two either. So let's go ahead and first off find what these areas will be. So we know the area of a, um, of the pipe is going to be equal to pi d squared divided by four. We know our diameter in section one or point one is 0 0.05 meters. And that our overall area at point one is 0 0.00198 meters squared. So that's another point that we're given in our problem statement or that we can calculate from what's given. Now let's go to section two or point two. We'll use the same area uh, equation. We'll throw in point one as our diameter now. So our area is increasing. And indeed it's 0 0.00785 square meters. So there's another data point we're going to go ahead and stash under our given, under our given variables. All right. So we're looking over at our general formula once again for our continuity equation. It looks like we have most everything we want except for the velocity at point two. So we gotta figure this out. But the problem isn't asking for the velocity, it's asking for the flow rate in liters per minute. So let's go back to page 104 of the NCES reference handbook and see what this flow rate's all about. Now, if you look down below the general formulas that are given for us, we have all the individual variables defined, and we can see that Q is called the volumetric flow rate. So that's what this problem is looking for. It's looking for the volumetric flow rate, which you pop up two lines, you see that the volumetric flow rate is equal to AV. 
And we know from the continuity equation and the first sentence in the continuity equation that as so long as the flow Q is continuous, then the flow will be the same at state one and state two. All right, so let's pop back over knowing that the flow rate is equal to Q is equal to AV. Again, we're gonna hop back over to the reference handbook and know that through continuity, Q1 is equal to Q2, so go back over there. I mentioned that a number of times now, but as long as the flow is continuous, the continuity equation as applied to one dimensional flow states that the flow passing through two points, one and two, in a stream is equal at each point. So that's where we're getting Q1 it is equal to Q2. Now if we expand on that, we just pull over our general formula because Q is equal to AV. So that means that A1 and V1 is equal to A2 and V2. And we know the area at point one, we know the area at point two, and we also know the velocity at point one. So we pull all that information down and we just populate our general formula or continuity equation. We rearrange it to isolate for the velocity at point two and we solve and we find that the velocity at point two is 1.26 meters per second. So that gives us all the data we need to hop back over to our flow rate equation, our formulas Q is equal to AV. We pop in our area at point two, we pop in our velocity of 1.26 and we find that the flow rate is equal to 0 0.0099 cubic meters per second. But we can't forget to actually uh, change our units into liters per minute. Now I'm gonna tell you right now that 0 0.0099 is going to be an, an, an option if you hit this type of problem on the exam. NCES once again knows that it's a very easy a mistake to make, especially under timed uh, time limitations. So if we just hop back to page three, we see a bunch of conversion factors and specifically we see that one liter is going to equal to 10 to the negative three cubic meters. That's money, that's what we need. We need to pull that conversion factor back over. So there's our little conversion string. We're gonna conv uh, convert cubic meters to liters, but we also have to convert minutes to seconds or seconds to minutes. So after doing so, we find that the flow rate in liters per minute is 594 liters per minute. Let me know how we could have done this problem a lot faster. There is actually one thing we could have done that uh, significantly sped up the calculation and our findings in this particular problem. So we know that our Q is 594 liters per minute, and we also know that Q1 is going to equal Q2, and that our standard formula for our flow rate is Q is equal to AV. Well, we have the area at point one, and we have the velocity at point one. So all we needed to really do is determine what the flow rate was at point one, with all the data that was given right there in the first sentence of the problem statement, and we could have solved the problem, at least got it down to cubic meters per second, which we then would have converted into liters per minute. So just a quick little hack.